Do you know steel buildings are subjected to wind and earthquake loading? In this tutorial, I will talk about how to work out loading on steel buildings and I will give you practical examples. This is part four of lecture series on steel design. For other parts, please see the link down below. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London University. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examined life. Now we want to find out the loading by using 6.10A and 6.10B, not 6.10. 6.10 is the common one, 1.35 GK plus 1.5 QK using 6.10a now in 6.10a the key difference is that we have two loads here we have we have wind load and we have now here we have variable action we have permanent action and then we have wind load 1.35 into gk is 400 vertical load is this one and qk again this is vertical load the psi factor combination factor is 0.5 for officers we are assuming here that vertical loads and wind load they are acting simultaneously so 6.10a it has got these psi factors in both of the combination factors and both of the variable actions the first one is related with the vertical load and the second one is related with the wind load so if i go back to the previous picture you can see that second one is wind but this psi factor for wind is 0.5 so that's where it comes from and this psi factor for office area is 0.7 that's where it comes from so here effect of variable actions from wind and from vertical load is combined but these factors are different this is 1170 kilonewton and 90 kilonewton this is permanent plus imposed flow loading and this is wind loading we're not adding it up we will just create a diagram where we will have these uh, loadings this is 6.10a so equivalent horizontal force will be equal to one over 200 of the vertical load vertical is this one 1170 next one so the diagram that i come up is this one using equation 6.10 a now using 6.10 b there is one important difference from 6.10 a 6.10 a has got this psi factor only in the second term now it depends which one we are taking as leading variable here we are taking imposed flow load as leading variable action it means that it appears first and wind appears second now here you can see that psi factor is only multiplied with the second one so this will affect the results first one is leading variable second one is accompanying variable and then you can see that this c factor is applied here after getting all the calculations the imposed load is 1400 and then wind loading is again 90 kilonewton now we can take wind as leading uh, action as well we can take wind as leading variable action as well because the code does not distinguish now if we take wind load as leading variable it means that wind load will come over here it will appear first the reason is that because we don't have any psi factor here and then imposed load is the accompanying action this is imposed flow load and this is the permanent one the total permanent plus imposed flow load the total design load is going vertical design load is going to be 1130 and now because wind is the leading variable we're not multiplying 0.5 over here we are not multiplying any psi here so this is 180 kilonewton equivalent horizontal load is 11.3 so this is the diagram for 6.10b when we're treating wind as leading variable now first one is 6.10a first one is by treating imposed flow load as leading the second one is by treating wind as leading okay. now all of these different combinations should be checked if you're designing a building as a whole you need to check all the combinations if you were designing this frame for vertical loads which combination would you choose which is the worst case scenario figure two figure three or figure four if I design it for this loading, 1170, the structure is actually subjected to higher load. The highest of all these three is this figure three for vertical loads. For gravity loads, I will choose the worst case scenario, which is this one. For wind, now tell me for wind loading, which combination will you go for? Figure four. 
figure four excellent so here you can see that this is 180 in other cases it's 90 so this is the worst case scenario this is the worst for gravity and if i am designing for gravity vertical loads then i will choose this combination if i am designing for wind then i will choose this combination this is my worst case scenario the conclusion is that we have to check all the possible combinations the simplest form to use is 6.10 which means that 1.35 times GK plus 1.5 times QK, which is the most common one across the world. The factors might be slightly different, but the variations are still not the same. We need to multiply them with factors. The results will be a little bit conservative. For more economy, use of 6.10 A and B is beneficial. So most of the structural engineers in the UK, they prefer to use this 6.10 A and B because it gives economy.